when you think of Mopar muscle, you think of Chargers, Cudas, and Roadrunners. You generally don't think of a 1969 Plymouth Valiant. This car, however, and the Mopar A-Body in general, is one of the best platforms to start your hot riding career, and today we're going to show you why. My name is Mike Musto. Each week I travel a country with the goal of showcasing the best and baddest muscle cars and hot rods around. Every car has a past and every owner a story. Welcome to the world of big muscle. I started working at North Hollywood Speedometer when I was 18, so that was back in 1987. About uh, 98, 1999, I became the service manager. Uh, more or less the service manager. I didn't have the title, but I pretty much was the main guy there that ran the shop. And uh, in 2003, my brother and I decided, hey, you know, my father-in-law got this building. Um, and he's like, hey, that'd make a good speedometer shop. And we're, so my brother and I were like, hey, let's, you know, let's just go for it. So we just jumped in and and turn this house, which is zoned commercial, into a shop. And about two weeks after we opened, another shop went out of business. The owner had passed away. And we got that shop. We were the only people that bid on it. And we got that a whole speedometer shop from another, another company uh, for $3,500. So I got all his inventory, all his test equipment, all the tools, special tools that he made to be able to work on instruments. So it really was a blessing. I mean, it was totally just like out of nowhere. to get a Mopar on the show this season. You know, so many of the submissions that we get are like Fords, GMs, and, and that's great and we love them all, but you guys know I kind of have an affinity for Mopars. You know, when one of the guys that we were trying to film backed out because of mechanical problems, he recommended Shannon and this car. This is a 1969 Plymouth Valiant, and it's a car that nobody back in 69 said, guess what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go buy a Valiant today. The people who bought this car back in the day were grandmothers. They were people that commuted, they were housewives, they were, you know, just kind of everyday people looking for a nice economy car. And that's what these were. Mopar A-bodies consist of like the Valiant, the Dart, the Demon, you know, early Barracudas, 66, 67s, stuff like that. I mean, the cool part about this car is the A-body Mopars, like this Valiant, are short wheelbase, they transition really quickly side to side, and they're a great platform to build off of. Now you gotta remember, Mopars also have a different suspension. They have torsion bars up front, right? So right off the bat, back in the day, they had a better suspension than their GM and Ford counterparts. You know, you could adjust the torsion bars for both ride height and stiffness, and it, it, it was just a nice, nice package. They're very, very underrated. This car was bought by Shannon 20 years ago for 800 bucks, and it was purchased in like a dual deal, right? He went to look at a Valiant and a Duster, ended up getting two cars for 800 bucks, sold the Duster, and kept the Valiant. I've had the car since 1994. I bought it out of the Recycler Classifieds. It was advertised uh, for 800 bucks. I had this built 360 that my father-in-law gave me. It came out of a Canadian cop car that was wrecked in a TV show. And um, so I bought the How to Rebuild a Small Block Mopar book with Dick Landy's son, Robert Landy, featured in it. So I built this, you know, 360 motor, and I originally was gonna put it in a truck. And my father-in-law was just like, man, you gotta put that in a car, like a two-door Dart or something like that. So I bought a 69 Dart, really nice slant six Dart. Um, that's originally where I was gonna put the motor in, but I was like, man, everybody does darts. I go to the local Mopar shows, and there's all these pro street darts, you know? Um, but then I started noticing Valiants, and uh, the green brick, you know, that, uh, the Valiant that was a road race inspired car, I started looking at that body style, I'm like, man, nobody does these. So that's when I started hunting and I got, you know, it was before the internet, so it was the Recycler Classifieds was the go-to place for finding a, you know, good used car. When he first built this car, it was more of a kind of a, like a pro street vibe. And he built it, you know, pretty much straight line, no sway bars, anything like that. As time went on, he decided, well, I kind of want to go around corners. And through his connections through Redline Gage Works, which is his company, 
he hooked up with the guys from Hodgkins. They were looking for a prototype car to test their new A-body TVS suspension kit. That's what this car has on it today. So aside from the suspension, this car also has a new steering box made by a company called Morganson. And, you know, the box is great because if you've ever driven a stock Mopar steering box, they always have like a quarter turn here, a quarter turn there of play before anything really happens. This box actually dials it out and it, it works really well. I mean, the steering wheel, just the wheel itself is off, you know, alignment wise, but the car tracks perfect. I mean, the turning is ultra quick, it feels good. But like, if you drop it down, once you get the boost, the thing pulls really, really, really well. You know, Shannon was saying red line's about 6,500 RPM, which seems about right for this car. But he's also talking about pulling this configuration out and going with something else, believe it or not, a Dodge Neon SRT4 motor in this with some boots. He wants to lighten the front end and make it a little less nose heavy. Yeah, when I originally decided to build it, I wanted to do a high impact color. I was originally gonna do uh, Plum Crazy Purple. And then I just started looking at the lime green cars and like, I don't really like purple, you know, so I, I like the lime green that's, you know, high impact color, so. And I wanted to build it more of a quarter mile car, so I put the skinny tires up front and drag radials in the back. And um, no sway bars, no nothing. Regular CarQuest shocks, so it would, you know, I had the Hemi Superstock springs. And so I built it like that. I did a lot of work with, with Mike Curtis when we were doing the overhauling show. So I called him up and I said, hey, we're doing this tech article. I need a set of wheels that have to have this offset and all that kind of stuff. He said, he's like, no problem, I'll make them for you. And he welded up a set and I went down and picked them up the next day. So <clears throat> there's not too many wheel shops that are gonna do that for you. And I think he charged me 600 bucks for the wheels. So it was pretty much his material cost, you know, his labor was pretty much free. And uh, they fit perfect right off the bat. So, I mean, you spec them out. And, and then later on, I had them powder coated black because I like the look of black wheels. These left, right, left transitions are really, really good. The manual brakes are nothing fancy. They don't come from Bear, they don't come from Willwood, they don't come from any company. They're kind of a generic 10 and a half inch rotor with off the shelf single piston calipers at all four corners and they work well, They're, they just do, you know? When you have a car for 20 years, you get to know it inside and out. You know every nut and bolt, every squeak, every rattle. And Shannon has managed to dial this in to a car that really kind of fits his driving style and personality. Believe it or not, when he first got this car, it had the original Slant 6 in it and it had 297,000 miles. So. To get a car like this, you can still do it relatively inexpensively. And by inexpensive, I'm talking, you know, maybe five to seven grand, okay, for a nice one in good shape. And slowly you can build it up. From a, an actual driving perspective, these are like big bird cages. So you've got great visibility. You've got these tiny A pillars. This car actually happens to be a post car, which is kind of neat. So, you know, you have solid door frames, so the windows seal really well. So, on a stock car, believe it or not, they're very, very quiet inside. All right, let's see what it does, all right? Man, I'll tell you, that fuel injection just, fuel injection is kind of nice. Instantaneous power. You know, it makes about 400 horsepower, which feels about right, and that's 400 at the wheels on this car. And you can take it, throw it in. I'm telling you guys, these A-bodies, mark my words, these things are gonna start bringing some big-ass money. You can set them up to be good slot cars. I got probably about 18.5, 19,000 invested in that car and people are like why would you do that with a Valiant you know but it's because I love it yeah. <laughs> yeah one one popped up at the Mopar show last year that's the exact same color as mine it's a 68 so it's got a different nose and he's got a big block in it but it's this exact same color it's got the black stripe and everything but so I was like ah you guys copied my car and they're like no we didn't really you know they're eager you know ready to say no we didn't really I don't know it's pretty too it's too close to my car yeah, to you know what's cool about the Plymouth Valiant? No one cares what you do to it. You could put any number of parts on this car and the only thing that people are gonna say to you is, that's cool. 
The Valiant is one of the last blank canvases left in the automotive world, so if I were you, I'd start looking for one now. She likes the Valiant, I can tell. She likes the Valiant. Everybody likes the Valiant. Everybody loves the Plymouth Valiant. It's a, uh, it's like Prince Charming, but from Mopar. Right, Prince Valiant. Valiant. Do we have a title? Prince no. Albert. Prince <laughs> But today, we're going to show you why the Valiant and the Mopar A-Body in general is one of the best platforms you can do and build for your oh home. So close! I saw you, dude. That was what happened. <laughs> it was right there. I was like, I was, I was like, I was on the edge. You're right. He's like, I'm going to get it all. I'm going to get it all. Look, he's like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it.